Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So today I've got another interview for you. I've got Fazri here from uh, Lucid Sight Game Studio to talk about some projects that they're working on in the Ethereum blockchain space. So before we jump into the interview portion of our call, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one uh, where I interview people who are building on top of Ethereum. So welcome, Fazri. You want to say hey to everybody? Hi. Hey, everyone. Uh, glad to be here today. Yeah, I'm glad as well. Um, so before we jump into like uh, all these focus questions, do you want to kind of just give your elevator pitch for working what you're working on over there at Lucid Sight? Absolutely. Um, so Lucid Sight was founded in 2015. We're a game studio that chose to focus on emerging technologies. Uh, and one of the technologies that we're kind of all in on right now is uh, Ethereum as a application layer for developing blockchain games. Um, right now at Lucid Sight, we have a couple projects, but the one I want to talk about today is Crypto Space Commander. It's a space sandbox MMORPG that uh, we're developing, very passionate about uh, internally, and we're looking to launch our alpha this June, beta a few months after that, and before the end of the year, be live so everyone can play and enjoy. Very cool. I look forward to that. So uh, if we want to find your project, where can we find it online? At csc-game.com or cryptospacecommander.com. Awesome. So you want to tell me uh, just some about the premise of your game? You know, how can I play? Sure. Uh, so Crypto Space Commander, it takes what I like to say is the best elements of several space games and genres that I've really enjoyed. I was a big fan of EVE Online growing up, still am, uh, but I also love Elite Dangerous, Star Citizen, Freelancer, if you want to go a little old school. And I've always wanted to create a game like this, where not only do you have the ability to explore the universe, discover resources, craft, and be a part of the economy, but you have ultimate control over that. And I thought Eve got very close at doing this, but at the same time, the assets in the game were never really owned by the user. I couldn't take those assets, play them in another game, trade them with a friend, or sell them if I you know, got tired of the game and wanted to move on. And I think what we saw when we saw Ethereum and blockchain gaming as a space was the for the first time ever, developers are going to be able to create assets that the users have 100% control over. And by doing that, we hope to empower users to be more vested in the game, more involved, and also profit from it. The game should be something where not just the developer is earning, but if you're spending 20, 30 hours a week, that's almost a full-time job, I hope you're able to turn some type of revenue or profit from playing the game. Uh, and I think that, as a nutshell, is basically what CSE is. CSE is an awesome-looking, deep uh, MMORPG space sandbox game that will let you, the user, command a starship, discover technologies, improve your ship, play with friends, quest, discover, and craft. Nice. That's very cool. So what, um, you know, what part of your game, like what features are you proud of most? I think the, the features I'm proud of most in this game is going to be the user-driven economy. We've spent months designing this out, reiterating, arguing back and forth on what needs to be on-chain and what doesn't need to be on-chain. And what we came, out, it came down to finally is that all assets that the user could own need to be on blockchain and have an immutable record of ownership. And by doing that, we really empower the user of having 100% ownership of their spaceship, of their laser. Uh, but taking that to the next level, we realized with the power of Ethereum contracts, we can do things that you just couldn't even imagine before. For example, in our game, if you are, as a player, decide you want to invest your time learning how to craft lasers, and you make the best laser out there, your lasers have a buff of 500% DPS. Well, when you craft that laser, it's immutably recorded to the blockchain that you are the creator of it. And as the creator, you could even elect to have a residual. Say, I'm going to build this laser, but anytime someone resells it, I want 1%. That could be written to the asset, giving you then an ongoing stream of revenue until the laser gets destroyed, uh, and then giving the person that's buying it from you still full ownership of it, but with complete transparent knowledge that, yes, when they do resell it, they'll get 99% and you'll get 1%. And why would they do that? Why would they give you that percent? It's like, well, you have the best laser in the game. You spent real time, real energy, real effort crafting that skill, developing up your character to be the best laser maker. 
character. And I think that's key for this game. We're going to have a lot of different avenues, a lot of different products, a lot of different specialties. Users can specialize in that trade, become the best ore miner, become the best transport, uh, transporter, become the best black market dealer, and be rewarded for it. Nice. So, you know, you mentioned uh, how you're using Ethereum to keep track of these assets in the game. Is that the only thing you're using Ethereum for? Um, yeah, uh, I think assets are key for what we're using Ethereum for. Well, actually, I'll, I'll take that back. Ethereum is also going to be our game currency. I think this is another important point. Um, there's a lot of projects out there, a lot of new Ethereum games and blockchain games. I'll say blockchain games coming up. And I think there's a, there's a key difference between our approach and a lot of our our uh fellow developers. And I, I've seen a lot of talk about side chains and building your own blockchain. I've seen a lot of ICOs pop up where, hey, buy our token is going to power this blockchain that will support gaming. And kudos to them, and I hope they have all the success. But really, when I think about it, developing a blockchain is not a side part of developing a game. Developing a blockchain is its own endeavor. It's its own initiative and really shouldn't be done lightly. Uh, look at the Ethereum Foundation, the amount of effort they put towards securing their blockchain and rolling it out and making it scalable. Um, I think as a game developer and a game studio, our focus should be on making the best game there is and not on developing new chains and new technology for it. Uh, hence why we heavily use Ethereum as our primary median for blockchain interaction. With that in mind, we also use Ether as the main currency of the game. So we don't have a token, we don't have a microcurrency or soft transact, soft currency in this game. Ethereum is the currency. Users will earn Ethereum between other users when they're trading. They can use Ethereum to buy items off the marketplace. There's no secondary token they need to track or purchase. Nice, very cool. So what all uh, other technologies did you use to uh, make this project in addition to Ethereum? Oh uh, well, this is actually, I think, one of the first, uh, at least so far as I know, the first announced space uh, blockchain game that uses Unity Game Engine. And this was a decision we made uh, relatively easily. We wanted to bring a high-fidelity, real-time experience, and we felt that Unity would let us do this across many platforms. One of the keys for this game when we started development is we still wanted it to be playable on the web, we still wanted it to interact with MetaMask, but we also wanted to have a mobile port to let you play at higher fidelity on a phone or an iPad, and then a PC port that let you play at full fidelity on a home PC. And by choosing Unity as our base system, we were able to accomplish a lot of that. Uh, the other thing we're using is we're using a lot of standard developed seasoned game development technologies. Yeah, we use Ethereum to run all our transactions, user ownership, and inventory, but a lot of the standard game game systems that provide the real-time interaction, the MMO functionality is running off standard game servers. Uh, this gives us the flexibility and helps us avoid the scaling issue that the Ethereum network has. Because 100% of everything going on in the game doesn't need to happen on the blockchain, only the important parts that really matter to the user ownership. Nice. So what is your monetization model for the project? Um, so our hope is that 90% of the transactions in this universe happen between players and that the community is making majority of the money. But you know, we need to support the game servers, we need to pay our devs, we need to keep new content coming out. So we're going to do that through introducing new technologies into the universe, new ship classes, new ship types. And every time we do so, we're going to release a fixed number of those ships. So we might release 100 or 1,000 of these of a ship type, and users will be able to buy them up in a pre-sale or off the marketplace once the game launches. But once we sell out, we as a company no longer generate those ships. It's up to them, the users who bought them, to deconstruct them, learn their crafting recipe, and then construct them and sell them to new players coming in. So our monetization model is reward us for giving you new content. We're not going to get rewarded just for sitting there and collecting. Nice. So can you tell me about your particular involvement in the project? You know, what role do you play? Absolutely. Um, well, I'm the CTO and co-founder of Lucid Site. I also run our development studio. And um, this game is, I'd say, the brainchild of myself and the rest of the company. But I've been an avid space fan, so I think I'm taking a big role in leading the design. Uh, we're really fortunate, however, to have a AAA game designer in-house. He's worked on three of the Tomb Raiders, uh, worked on the Lo uh, uh, Lost Planet franchise, and has 
really brought a lot of depth and quality to our game where, um, you know, I provided the scope. This is kind of what I'm looking for, and this is where we need to go. But Steve, our game designer, who will be making a lot of blog posts, and you'll be able to read directly from him as he's describing as we're designing this game, uh, has really added a lot to it. And really is bringing the level and the AAA quality of de design to, to the game. Very cool. So you mentioned a little bit about your, uh, you know, background as a as a gamer and a game developer. Uh, how did you get into the blockchain space? Uh, so I've been interested in blockchain since my college days. Uh, you know, early mining Bitcoin in my dorm room. Unfortunately, didn't keep any of that. So. <laughs> Quite a nice lump of money today, uh, but. I've uh, been following blockchain for quite some time. It's just been a nerdy thing that I've enjoyed. Uh, when Ethereum came out, I thought it was really cool. I remember seeing their initial offering of Ether. I remember following it when it was a dollar. And, you know, then it started spiking up, and the Ethereum virtual, uh, virtual machine started proving that it could do some really substantial things. Um, so early in 2007 or late 2016, we're like, hey, we should look at this seriously as a platform for development. And that's kind of how it started. Nice. So what do you think the uh, future of dApps are? I think the future of dApps, uh, I think Vitalik speaks to this best. I mean, uh, dApps provide a key functionality that didn't exist before. They provide digital scarcity. And I think right now, most dApps are 100% on-chain, which is great, and it's a great proof of concept, and it shows what's possible, but we've clearly seen that there's a scaling issue. When one game can take up 23% of the network bandwidth for the <laughs> Ethereum, there's a problem and it's not gonna scale. So I think the solution here is to have a hybridization approach. You know, Multiplayer, every user's movement, their position in the universe doesn't need to be on the blockchain. Transactions, uh, marketplace, and inventory does need to be on the blockchain. And I think there's a good mix of hybridizing it. And I think our game's going to be one of the first big games that really hybridize that, but uh, I foresee seeing a lot more of those coming down the pipe. Nice. Um, how do you, or what do you see as the future of... Uh, um uh, dApps uh, in the game industry on a short term? Do you have any kind of maybe like timelines for what you expect to see in 2018? I expect in 2018 we're going to see a lot more quality titles come out. Um, in, in the short term, you know, we've had a lot of duplicates of pull the bag games, collectible games, and you know, right now like the, the pyramid games. Uh, I think a lot of those are short-term fads that will probably disappear as people realize that they can only get so much enjoyment out of it. Um, I think from talking to other developers and seeing what they're working on, there's a lot of great D-app games coming out this year. And I know, uh, speaking for, for Lucid Sight, we have actually a project we've been working on longer than Crypto Space Commander. Actually, it's our longest running project, one of the first things we started when we went to D-app games that we'll be announcing down the road, which we hope to make a pretty significant splash in the D-app space. Nice. So it sounds like you've got a pretty exciting announcement coming up, but uh, yeah. aren't necessarily at liberty to talk about at the moment. So maybe we'll uh, circle back around whenever that time comes. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Nice. Um, so can we find uh, more about you all on social media? Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, you could go to our website, lucidside.com, or go to our cryptospacecommander.com, and we have links to all our social media channels, Twitter, uh, Discord, uh, Telegram. We're active on all those. Um, so definitely join our uh, chat rooms. Speak to us directly. Uh, for CSC, it's going to be an open development process. We're going to be uh, sharing everything we do while we do it. We'd love community feedback. We'd love your thoughts on what you'd like to see in the game and what uh, what you might like change from what we uh, post. So please, uh, please come speak to us. Nice. We appreciate that. Um, so I have uh, one kind of fun question that I've started asking sure. people. Uh, so how do you spell the word DAP or DAP? Ah, <laughs> well, how do you pronounce it or how do you spell it? I guess both in your case. <laughs> well, I say D-app, uh, though most people say D-app. Uh, so D-A-P-P. -P. Uh, 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 that's how I would do it. How do you uh, uh, format I, the letters? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> lowercase d, capital A, P. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I, I put a, a poll out about this on my Twitter and had a lot of people vote on their uh, 
particular flavor of of the spelling of the word. Uh, it's just funny to see uh, such a uh, variety of of ways at this early. Oh, this, this is early Jim being gifts all over again. This is, this is really except there's more options for spelling yeah. at least. <laughs> That's true. How do you pronounce DAP? Uh, I just say DAP. I mean, I've spelled it a couple different ways. I think my YouTube banner uses like the special character D. Um, oh, yeah. Mark on yeah. yeah, I think most of the time I just spell it all lowercase just for ease. But, um, you know, it seems like people are gravitating towards lowercase D capital A. So I'll, I'll do that too. But, um, yeah. I mean, the original white paper does say it's pronounced D app like email, but people seem to forget that. Oh, okay. I actually learned something today, so I'll go ahead and I'll go back and uh, cite that source. And published uh, in 2010. I'll, I'll fire you the link over. I, yeah. I kind of send this, but no one seems to care. It's all about dabs. <laughs> no, that's okay. I appreciate that. That'll no give problem. me uh, some ammo if uh, someone wants to, you know, take issue over over that. <laughs> I like it. Well, Fosri, I've, I've enjoyed our chat. Um, is there anything else that you'd like for the people watching to know before we wrap up today? Uh, yeah. Uh, Crypto Space Commander's website is live. Uh, we actually have our first ship sale active. So if you're interested in getting the ship at about 200% less than what it's going to actually cost to make the ship when the game launches, now's the time. CryptoSpaceCommander.com. Awesome. Yeah, check that out. And uh, also be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can see more videos like this where I interview people who are uh, building on top of Ethereum, building uh, exciting new projects as this space kind of starts to develop and explode. Uh, well, Fosri, I've enjoyed our chat. Um, like I said, we'll have to have you back on another time whenever uh, things start to develop for CSE and Luthen's site. Um, but until then, everybody, we're signing off, and thanks for watching DAP University. Thanks for having us. See ya.